Now that we have our level created, let's talk a little bit about gameplay and physics. One of the first things that we're going to need to do is set up physics for our player and our environment. And to do that, we're going to need to add a couple interesting components. The physics system in Unity is pretty powerful and robust, so you shouldn't have to do a whole lot of complex math or anything else to deal with collisions and combat and all of the normal stuff that you would want to do. All we're really going to need to do is control the way that the player moves by sending it a little bit of data here and there and reading some inputs. Sounds a lot more complicated than it is. So let's take a look at how we can start moving our player around, how we can start making it interact with the physics system. To do that, we're going to go select the alien blue. I'm going to go to this scene view again. Remember, if you don't see it like this flat, just click that 2D button, and we should see our alien here right above the ground with some stuff kind of covering a space. If you want to get rid of the stuff covering a space, by the way, you can click this button to hide all gizmos. Just make sure that you remember you can bring it back up so you can see that camera view and other things that it will show you later on. So I'm going to hide it for now, and then we'll take a look at this character a little bit more in the inspector. In the inspector, we've got the sprite render and we've got the transform in. Perhaps I could write some code that makes this thing move down, or I could drag this thing down to make him fall with gravity. But again, there's a physics system. We don't want to do that. We want to use the built-in stuff. So how do we do that? Well, we need to add a component. We need to add a physics component specifically. And we'll do that by clicking the Add Component button. We'll clear out the search box that I've got there, and then find Physics 2D. It's about, what, halfway down here? And then click on it, and you'll see that there are a lot of different options. Don't worry, we're going to cover most of these, and they're a lot less complicated than they seem once you've gotten used to them. So now that I've got this pop-up, though, I want to find Rigid Body 2D. Select that and add it as the component to my alien. So now I've got a sprite renderer and a Rigid Body 2D component. If I save by hitting Control S or File Save and hit the Play button, I should now see my alien start to fall down. It's going to fall, 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 and kind of drop back either behind or in front of that ground piece, and then keep falling. If I look at my position here on this alien, I still have him selected, so he's showing up in the inspector. So he's just falling and falling. The, the value is going down lower and lower and lower. A lower value on the Y just means it's lower down. Up on the Y, positive on the Y is up, negative on the Y is down. So now he's falling very, very far. So now I want to make it so that he doesn't just keep falling. I want to change it up so that my alien, um, when he falls down and touches the ground, he'll actually stop and land on the ground. To do that, I'm going to need to add a couple more components. I'm going to need to first add a collider. So to do that, we'll collapse the sprite render, and I'm going to collapse this rigid body. Notice you can click on these to collapse and expand them. You don't have to find that little arrow exactly. I'll collapse both of those, and I'm going to hit the Add Component button again. Go to Physics 2D, and I'm going to find the Polygon Collider 2D. I'll click on it, and it should be added. And if I zoom in a little bit, I might just be able to see it. Oh, I've turned my gizmos off. If I click the gizmos button, I can now see this green outline showing my collider. It's a little bit hard to see because there's a lot of stuff in front of it. But if I uncheck this sprite renderer so my sprite stops showing up, I can see this green outline showing me my collider. And the collider is the thing that the game engine is going to use to determine how it actually interacts with the world. So if it falls down, it'll land on this object. It won't use the actual sprites. The reason for that is you don't want every sprite to have collision on it. Imagine I've got a fence sitting in front of me that I'm walking in front of or past or something that I'm trying to like run behind. Um, that object I don't want to collide with me. So we have totally separate control over the collisions versus the rendering. And this is kind of seeing that in action. All right, let's zoom out with the mouse wheel, middle mouse to pan around, and press play. I'll let, let my character fall down and see if he stops on the ground. So you see that he didn't stop on the ground. He falls all the way through. And the reason for that is we need a collider on the grass as well. Colliders only interact with other colliders and need something to actually hit and land on. So to add a collider to the grass, we'll go select our grass. And we'll choose the Add Component button again. Go to Physics 2D. And this time, we're not going to choose a polygon collider. We're not going to choose the polygon collider 2D because we have a relatively square or rectangular shape. So we can actually choose a box collider 2D. And the reason that we want to go with a box collider over a polygon collider is primarily performance. 
Co calculating collisions for squares and boxes for the computer is very easy. Calculating them for sprites is a lot more complicated, even when the sprite is technically just a box. There's no real reason to use a sprite renderer when we have a box, so we'll go with a box collider, or sorry, a box, a polygon collider, not a sprite renderer. I said the wrong word there. All right, so we've got our box collider, and if I press play, I should now see that my character lands on top of the box collider. So I play, and he lands right there. Looking good so far. There is an issue, though. If I uncheck the sprite renderer on my grass so that I can only see the collider, look at this little green box here. That's where my collider is. My collider isn't tiling out and using the same width like my sprite renderer was. That's actually an option, though. Right here, we've got the auto tiling checkbox. If I check that, the green box went all the way out, and now it's covering the entire thing. I'll recheck my sprite renderer press play, and it's going to work exactly the same because I was landing over there. But let's see what would happen if I hadn't done that. So let's say that I haven't checked auto tiling, and I move my player over here a little bit to the right, like I make his position B, oh, let's say 2 on the X. Now look at the grass, so the collider's there, my character is there. If I actually select both of them, I can see the colliders for both, and press play and see that he'll fall right past. Falls right past. Yep, and then if I go again, check that auto tiling so the collider covers the whole thing, he'll land on top of that ground. Oh, he did not land on top of my ground. Why did he not land on top of my ground? Oh, I checked auto tiling on the wrong collider. If we go to the grass mid and check auto tiling, then he'll land on the ground. You got to make sure that you actually select it on the correct object. There we go, looking good. So I think that's good. I'm gonna save my level and then we'll move on to moving our player around and setting up some source control.